I'm Joe James, and in this video we are going to apply Dijkstra's algorithm to this directed graph. Now, just as a reminder, Dijkstra's algorithm can be applied to either directed or undirected graphs, and it can only be used with non-negative edge weights. So if we have any negative edge weights, we cannot apply it to this graph. In this case, we have one zero edge, but no negative edge weights. So we can apply Dijkstra's algorithm on this graph to find the shortest path to each vertex from a single source. In this case, we'll call that source S on the top left here. So the first thing we need, we're going to use a table to track the distance of each vertex from the source. And we're going to initialize those distances all to infinity with the exception of the source itself, since that's where we're starting. And we'll use another variable called pi to track the predecessor vertex, or the vertex we just previously visited. To apply Dijkstra's algorithm, we will start at the source and we will relax each of the outgoing edges in alphabetical order. So we have two outgoing edges from the source. We are going to start with S to A and with a distance of 2. So since we currently have a distance for A of infinity, we can now reach A in 2 with the predecessor of S. So we'll update our table to reflect that we can reach A in 2 coming from the source. And we're going to mark this 2 as already finished. And next we're going to relax edge SD. So now we can reach vertex D with a distance of 20. Previously our best was infinity. So 20 coming from the source. Now we'll mark this edge as completed. Now we're done relaxing all the outbound edges from vertex S. We'll mark vertex S as completed and we'll move on to the next vertex, A. Why would we choose A? Well, because that is the closest vertex to the source. At a distance of only 2, as we can see in the table here, D is at a distance of 20, and all the others are infinity. So we'll jump to vertex A. We'll relax all of its outbound edges. In this case, we only have one edge going to E at a cost of 3. So if we can reach A in 2, and we add 3 to that, we can reach E in 5. So we'll put a 5 under E, and what is E's predecessor? A. We just came from vertex A. Now we're done with vertex A. We'll mark that as visited. Now let's mark edge AE as already completed. We'll visit vertex E, which is the next closest vertex to the source. As you can see, E is only 5 from the source. E has three outbound edges to G, H, and B. We'll visit B first because it comes first alphabetically. So edge EB has a weight of 1. So we can reach E in 5. We can now reach B in 6 by coming from vertex E. We'll mark this edge as visited. Now we need to look at E's next edge, which is EG with a weight of 6. Well, it takes us 5 to reach E. It would take us 11 to reach G. We currently have infinity, so we'll accept that. We'll mark E as the predecessor for G. And then we'll mark this edge as completed. And lastly, we have EH with a weight of 4. We currently don't have a route to H, and it costs us 5 to reach E, so we can reach H now in 9, coming from vertex E. We'll mark edge 4 as complete, and then we'll mark vertex E as visited. Now we're going to choose the next vertex to visit. Which one is nearest to the source that we haven't visited yet? Well, B is 6, so that's the next closest. So let's go to vertex B. B has only one outbound edge, B to C at a weight of 7. We currently can't reach C at all, so anything's better than that. So 7 plus 6 is going to give us 13 to get to vertex C. And we'll mark B as the predecessor. Then we can mark this edge as visited. And we're done with vertex B. So we'll mark B as finished. And we can move on to our next vertex. Looks like H is our next nearest vertex, so let's visit vertex H. H has two outbound edges, HE with a weight of 2 and HG with a weight of 1. We'll visit the alphabetically first edge, which is HE. We can already reach E in 5. We can reach H in 9, so if we add two more to that, we could get to E in 11 if we wanted to. That doesn't benefit us. So we can mark this edge as complete, and now we can look at H's other edge. So getting to H in 9, and we add 1 to that to reach G, we can get to G in 10. So we found a better route to G by going through vertex H. So we'll update G's predecessor as well, and we'll mark this edge as complete. 
We have no more outbound edges from H, so we can mark vertex H as complete. Next, we'll visit vertex G, which is the next closest vertex to the source, with a distance of 10. G has only one outbound edge going to D. Now our current distance to G is 10. We can add 2 to that to get to D with this edge weight of 2. Now we can reach D in 12. That's better than what we currently have at 20. So let's update D's distance to, from the source to 12. D's predecessor is now going to be G. And we can mark this edge complete. Now we have no more outbound edges from G, so we can mark G complete. The next nearest vertex from the source is vertex D. So we'll visit vertex D, which has no outbound edges. We can mark D as complete. The next nearest vertex from the source is C, with a distance of 13. So we'll go to C, and we only have one outbound edge, which has a distance of 5, to F. So we can reach F in 13 plus 5, or 18. So we'll update F's distance and F's predecessor to C. We can mark this edge as complete. And now we have no more outbound edges from C, so we can mark vertex C as complete. And our last vertex to visit is vertex F, which currently has a distance of 18. F has one outbound edge with a weight of 0. That's definitely not going to help us on B, because we already have a distance of 6, where F has a distance of 18. So that does not give us a shorter path to B by passing through F. So we can mark this edge as complete. We have no more outbound edges from F, so we can mark vertex F as complete. And now we're finished. Now we've applied Dijkstra's algorithm on a directed graph to find the shortest distance to each vertex from the source. If you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up and click the subscribe button. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.